Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery, and today we're going to be spraying drywall texture in a renovation on modern builds. No, Mike's first flip. It's Mike's first flip. Some of the walls just needed patched, like this one right here. I filled any of the holes in the drywall, and then I sanded it all smooth. And on some walls, like this one, I had visible seams. So I just did a quick skim coat over that and sanded it flat. These joint compound patches represent low spots in the wall. My goal is just to get a uniform look across the whole house, so let's try it. I rented this sprayer from Home Depot, but it's what you could expect from Home Depot or Lowe's or most places. It's about 60 bucks for four hours and around 100 bucks for a day. And what's really awesome about this type of machine is that you don't have a hopper on top of your sprayer. Instead, you've got one line, which is your air feeding from the compressor and another hose feeding your material from the hopper right here. The sprayer came with a gradient of nozzles. We're gonna be using the smallest, which is for orange peel, but you can use a large one like this for a knockdown texture. The tips screw on easily, just make sure it's seated on there well. I'll be using standard all-purpose joint compound and I'm mixing it up in a five gallon bucket. There's three and a half gallons of joint compound here and I'm gonna add water to thin it out for the sprayer. I'll leave a link down to the tools, materials, and supplies I used, including this mixing attachment for a drill. And so far I've done a little less than two quarts of water and to test the consistency, I run my finger through it. And if that trough collapses in on itself, then I know I have enough. I added a little less than another quart and that got me to the right consistency. You'll see that right here. For a heavier knockdown texture, you'll want a stiffer mix, but we're going for the consistency of yogurt here. When you run your finger through the mix, you want it to collapse in on itself like that. To prep my sprayer, I ran some water through the whole system just to make sure it was running well. If it is, you'll get a steady stream like that. I'll be mixing multiple batches, so I just put the mixing paddle back into the bucket and covered it with plastic. I purged all of the water out of our hose until it was spraying joint compound. Then I referred to the guide on the side of the tank to show that for orange peel texture, I wanted a low material flow, but a high air pressure. It's also very important to get everything dialed in before you start spraying your actual walls. Pressure up. Right away, I noticed I was getting blobs wherever my spray started. That's still a little heavier than I want. I think that's it. One technique I immediately noticed is not to go full blast with your trigger right away. Squeeze gently to prevent puddles. Quick pro tip, it's best to start in one of the back rooms of the house, basically the furthest place your sprayer can reach. That way you won't have hoses bumping into the walls that are wet where you've already sprayed. A lot of the walls in this house had so many holes. There were quite a few of imperfections on the walls before I seen. A Tyvek suit like this is great, especially if you're spraying ceilings, and you'll definitely want a dust mask or respirator. Oh, and since this is a remodel, I'm gonna be using a spray shield quite a bit. And now it's game time. The material flow is set really low, and we'll turn our air pressure really high. Wish me luck. The next couple of rooms have dark paint where the spray is gonna be more noticeable in this room, but I wanna talk about a few best practices in this space. First, you wanna keep your spray gun parallel to the wall. You don't wanna point down to the floor and up at the ceiling too much. Try and hold it parallel and straight. Beyond that, you wanna go in an up and down and then side to side pattern to prevent yourself from being able to see your lines too much. For orange peel texture, you wanna hold the gun at least 12 inches away from the wall to get a good spread, but you can hold it back as far away from three feet to get the desired texture that you like. And you can see I'm trying not to go in perfectly straight lines. I'm going in tiny little spirals. Whatever you can do to break up patterns to yours and other people's eyes is what we're going for. And in the description down below, I'll leave links to a couple of videos I learned from, from people that are more experienced than me. And this next room being dark is gonna be really helpful for you all to be able to see better too. I forgot to turn the air off. Let's try that again. I realized how much of a win, win, win using this machine without the hopper on top is because it allows me to use a spray shield to mask off a lot of doorways and other things instead of holding the gun with two hands. This is great, particularly in a remodel where there's a lot of different things that I need to work around. 
After you go over your wall twice, make sure and spot check anything that needs it and then move on. You can always spend more time putting on more texture, but that's where you run the danger of putting too much and it creates more of a ripple effect than an orange peel. On the left side of this wall here, I can still see my pattern. That's because I didn't do little spirals as I went. I did pretty straight lines and I can still see the crosshatch. In fact, I had to come back later to break that up because it was noticeable. This is the master bedroom and it's got this whole area where we opened up space for the new master closet. I'm excited to see how we can blend this new work with the old construction. On this wall, I got back to doing little cursive circles while I went up and down and I got a noticeably better result. Doing those little O's is better than just going back and forth because you don't have a stop and start point where that texture could build up and ripple like we talked about earlier. If you're somebody that's got drywall texture spraying experience, whether it's DIY or professional, I would appreciate any helpful comments that you've got down below. I want to create a helpful resource for people that might be in a similar situation. I've done all the research that I can online through blogs and YouTube videos and I've tried to condense that down here. But if you see ways that I can improve my technique or if you've got some helpful tips, please let us know. Okay, so that was very encouraging. I got a really good blend. Come check this out. So on this wall, we had to do a really big repair. You can check out the befores and look at it now. Way better. Really quick before we move on, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. Your all-in-one stop for a new website, online store, or just a custom domain. And with Fluid Engine, it's never been easier to build your own website and unlock your unbreakable creativity. Just start with one of Squarespace's best-in-class designer templates and then customize every aspect from there with their upgraded drag-and-drop technology on desktop and mobile. There's also no limits to the number of products you can sell using a Squarespace online store, whether they're physical goods, digital, or a service product. And if you sell things in person, Squarespace has got you covered. By connecting a Square card reader to the Squarespace app, you can make sure that all of your sales and inventory are up to date, live in person, and online. So to learn more, make sure and follow my link down in the description, squarespace.com slash modern builds, where you can build out your entire Squarespace site before entering any of your credit card info. And then when it's time to make your website live, don't forget to use my code, modern builds, for 10% off your first site, store, or domain through Squarespace. Hey, remember, these walls have been skim coated, so this is putting a fresh coat over a super flat wall. We've got a lot of different scenarios here in this house. The small, sort of frustrating mistake that I found myself repeating was pulling the trigger from zero to 100 right away. This can cause a little bit of material buildup close to the gun to all spray out at once and then make a puddle if you're not careful. Partway through the day, I did abandon using the spray shield where the wall meets the ceiling. As long as you're holding the gun perpendicular to the ceiling or parallel to the wall, I didn't get a lot of splatter on the ceiling, and the little bit that got on there I think helps everything blend. Now let's take care of the bathroom. Now I had to do so much work on this wall where the vanity was. I took out a wall, a big soffit above the whole counter area, and then smoothed everything out. I think it's gonna be seamless when we're done. Let's find out. Now it's probably as good as time as ever to talk about what I use to mask off things like the vanity, windows, kitchen cabinets, and the shower here, and that is the 3M Hand Masker. It basically holds a roll of masking paper or plastic in painter's tape so that you can dispense them together and then fold everything out. They've got plastic at four feet long and eight feet long. The eight feet one is what I use to cover a lot of the floors too. This bucket number three, I basically got two bedrooms out of one five gallon bucket. I did a quick thin skim coat on this wall just so I could get rid of these seams in the original drywall panels. I guess I won't know for sure until paint goes on, but let's give it a go. What got my attention right away is how these seams started to disappear. Very exciting. We'll see once everything dries and when there's paint. Next, we've got another wall with a whole lot of patches on it. I have to imagine anybody that's doing this regularly has a jacked forearm because that circular motion really does work your muscles out. I can only imagine having a hopper on top. Super grateful that I rented this machine.
One thing I think it's good to remind you is to make sure you get all of your window casings. This house had a really, really light texture compared to the rest of the walls on the windows, so it was nice to get everything matching. And if this wall ends up being smooth, I'm gonna be so hyped. Remember, we took out a doorway going to a closet there and then skim coated the wall to smooth out all of those seams in the drywall. Okay, instead of doing that wall, I'm gonna go to the other corner of the house, the spare bathroom, and I'm gonna start spraying that room, working my way back to the front door. The drywall in this space had had the most patches, repairs, and random damage to it. There were a lot of cracks above and below the windows, and once I got this texture coat on, it was cool finally seeing some of those imperfections blend away a little bit. I skim coated all of these walls which are right outside of the bathroom and that really made the bad drywall in the bathroom super noticeable. Oh, and it's very helpful to stand away from the wall to check for any bare spots or just a recognizable pattern before you move on. And now it's time for the kitchen. I'll have a backsplash underneath the cabinets so I don't have to spray the whole thing. This kitchen renovation is gonna get its own video where I alter the cabinets, move them up for a more contemporary look, do the countertops, backsplash, everything you can think of. And now it's time for the beam. This is more new drywall with a skim coat on top to flatten everything out. Make sure if you do this project, you protect your lungs. And I always use an RZ mask dust mask. Before I started working today, I replaced the filter out on my M2 RZ mask with a new one, and this filters out 99.9% .9 of particulates in the air, down to 0.1 micron. The one strap design is really comfortable and quick to take on and off, and the mesh material is great for warm weather, unlike this jumpsuit. There's also an M2.5 with two elastic straps if you're interested in that. I'll leave links to all of that down below. Make sure and use the promo code MODERNBUILD. Words cannot describe how exciting it is to see all of this drywall work and repairs blend away and sort of become uniform. I've been working on the framing and drywall for what seems forever. It's been almost two months now. Filming videos along with building doesn't help things go faster, but I have been surprised at just how long it's taken. Let me show you from my point of view. Sorry for any shakiness here, but hopefully this gets you a little bit of a feel of what to expect when the gun's running. You gotta keep it moving, that way you don't get any blobs or puddles. It moves fast! Honestly, this process is a ton of fun because it is so forgiving. The idea here is you don't want something that's perfect and uniform. You're trying to get a pattern that's broken up where you don't see a recognizable pattern. This should be the last bucket I'm mixing up today. I sure hope so. I've used a total of one, two, three, four, five, and the house is just under 1,500 square feet, although I didn't do the ceilings. I can see how this would be a really convenient two-person job. It would be more than twice as fast if someone was just constantly mixing, making sure that the other person was prepared and always spraying. It would probably just take a few hours. You'll probably remember there used to be a mural on this wall. We're covering it up. It's one that had some of the worst drywall seams. With this wall being the first one that you see right when you walk in the house, I spent a little bit of extra time blending out all of those seams in the drywall and doing a decent skim coat. That way when you walked in, you got a good first impression on the place. And now it's time for our final wall. Let's go. First, I cleared my things off of the window ledge and you'll notice that above this doorway, I've got pretty bad seams or cracks in the drywall. This is common on pretty much every door and window in this house, and that's why I sanded all of the walls down, and I'm doing a new texture on top. Hopefully the uniformity just makes everything feel really clean and comfortable, and I'm doing the lightest orange peel texture possible for a modern contemporary look. And if you're this far in the video and you're not already subscribed, make sure and click that along with the notification bell down below so you can see everything that I'm up to on this series called Mike's First Flip. This is my second whole home renovation and I'm learning a ton along the way and hopefully you guys are picking some stuff up too. That's walls complete. And now all we need to do is take care of the ceiling repairs that we did. So for this, I'm gonna be switching out from the smallest nozzle to one larger. That way I can match the ceiling texture, which is a little heavier. Oh geez, making a little bit of a mess. My bad, I'll clean it up. 
The texture here is still really similar to an orange peel. It's kind of a heavier spatter texture, and that's why I went with a slightly wider nozzle and a little bit lower air pressure. I can't believe that, that's almost perfect. Compared to the walls, I just want a little bit more spread and negative space and thicker buildup where I do get texture. The repair here leading into the hallway was the smaller of the ceiling patches, and that's why I started here. I was pumped with the blend that I was able to get. You'll notice that I sprayed pretty far outside of the drywall repair. That way I could create a little bit of a gradient so that it's less noticeable. I did the same thing here in the kitchen. The patch was much larger, but I took the same approach. This ended up being pretty difficult to film handheld. Once I got my lens all cleaned up, I ended up spraying a really wide gradient on either side of the repair. I can always sand this joint compound really easy compared to the texture with paint on top from the old wall. That way I can blend it. That's it y'all. I can't believe it, but we're done. I'm gonna clean this machine up, get it purged with water so that it'll be good to return, and I'll be back tomorrow with you to check out the results. I just got back from returning the tool to Home Depot. I couldn't be more hyped with the results. Come check it out. This wall in particular was one of my bad ones, but check it out. You can no longer see the visible seams where the drywall panels meet. Also, if you put a straight edge against the wall, there's no light shining through, which means we're flat. You might be able to see a tiny bit of staining around the perimeter of where the door was, but if you close your eyes and just feel it, it's completely smooth and there's no gap on the straight edge. Super pro. The hallway ended up looking great, same as everything else. A little bit of that staining bled through the new texture, but once we get white paint on, you won't be able to see it after primer. This right here is an example of some of the rippling that I was trying to avoid everywhere. If you got a little bit too heavy of a hand, this will happen in places, but it's so easy to sand smooth. And I think that's 180 grit that I've got. The bathroom's looking super fresh. I'm gonna play another before shot. I know I played one earlier, but oh well. I don't think anyone would expect the amount of repairs that we did by just looking at this. Oh, look at that. You can still see the spots where I had to patch holes in the wall, but to the touch, it's completely smooth. I think once we get white paint on, all of these spots are going away. I've gotta say, I got great results for under 200 bucks. The sprayer rental was about 100, and the joint compound was about 75. If you've contracted this out recently, let me know what you spent. I'm curious how much money I would have saved. And if you're a contractor, let me know what you would have bid this. I know I'm not a pro, but I got good results on my walls and the ceiling, so I can't complain at all. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time. Make sure and click like, comment, and subscribe. In the next episode, we're gonna be painting the walls with an airless spray, so I'm really looking forward to it. We'll see you then on Mike's First Flip.